All right, everyone, there is a glimmer of hope right now over in the UK, that rainy island that right now is extremely dark because of the time of year. You may end up actually having a hard Brexit. Boris Johnson has now absolutely ruled out the possibility of an extension past this next year for any negotiations, which means that's it. Um, finally, he's put his foot down. There are no workarounds left to his opposition. Um, he's got too much of a majority for them to be able to stop him. Like, he's pretty much got a majority just a Brexit party, uh, I mean, uh, Brexit fans within the Tory movement, let alone adding in a few people that are outside uh, in labor and stuff that still support it, as well as having the partisan majority by a huge margin. There's no longer anything that can stop Brexit, which is good. The problem is that Brexit can be delivered in a soft form that won't really be Brexit. You could end up with an initial Brexit for some years to come that basically makes you beholden to everything the EU does without even having a vote. I think that that would be a fate worse than death because what will happen if that occurs? And this is definitely what the EU authorities want, which is why they'll probably give you some degree of favorability in your new dealings because they really, really want you to have a soft Brexit so they can put the screws to you later. What they want to do is punish the UK as much as possible and bring its economy down in the wake of an actual Brexit agreement so that they can look at it, they can point to it, and they can tell other countries, this is what will happen to you if you leave the European Union. See how bad off you are if you leave? Your economy will go into a depression, a tailspin, and people will uh, suffer in the streets, and uh, you, won't, you, know, you won't even be a nation anymore. They're going to try to embarrass humiliate and bring low the UK in every way possible. This has always been what they planned to do. Their first stopgap was hoping that they would win the voters referendum. I don't even think they tried to rig it. I think they thought that there was eh, a 50-50 chance that they would prevail and they could put the whole thing behind them. When Nigel Farage and others showed up and managed to make the successful case for Brexit, of course that changed. Then, their next goal was to try to kick the can long enough so that people would sour on the notion of Brexit and begin blaming it for any problems that would occur. And so they sent in Theresa May. Now, here was someone who supposedly wanted to negotiate Brexit on UK terms, but had been a Remainer. A Remainer conservative was chosen to head the negotiations. For what reason? Oh, I can only speculate. Could it be because they didn't want a Brexit? The idea was to make it painful enough that people would demand another referendum. But that never materialized. The British people never said they wanted a second referendum. They did, however, want another election to stand in as a referendum. So they gave it to them, figuring, well, maybe Labour will win. Maybe Boris Johnson will have split government. Maybe they'll kick him out. The Tories will be a Remainer party. No, that didn't happen. Major majority, especially of Brexiteers. So here you are. They have no cards left to play. The only thing left that they can do is that after you leave, if it's a deal-based Brexit, they will make it as hard as possible for the UK. I guarantee it. There's still, though, a glimmer of hope, which is that since Boris Johnson's saying, fuck it if it goes on too long, you know, if I deliver on this, at least people who support Brexit will still support me after the fact. Otherwise, nobody will support me. Remainers will hate me for being pro-Brexit. Brexiteers will hate me for delaying it again. So he's going to go forth with it. There's a possibility that if people like Nigel Farage play their cards right procedurally, they can lock things up and force a no-deal Brexit. Why not? You need, to, you need to try to lean on some of you. Why don't you try to infiltrate those groups within the EU that are actually like they want to punish the UK even harder and try to convince them to do uh, terrible, dastardly things now and say crazy shit so that the British people will demand a no-deal Brexit? Why not? That should be what you attempt to do. The idea that Brexit is going to make the UK weak is stupid. The idea that it makes the, uh, the idea that Brexit helps the EU, like, oh, they're going to run roughshod over our British territorial waters and they're going to take everything from us. No, they're not. Are you not a functional country like any other? Hell, the UK is one of the bigger powers in the world economically and militarily. You may not have the manpower of, like, India or China or something like that, but you can hold your own. You've got nuclear weapons. You've got an aircraft carrier, although I think you've only got one, so that puts you a little bit behind Italy. Make another one, and then you'll be, like, I think, number four in the world. Uh, you've got decent naval power, a lot of powerful friends, including the United States, your greatest ally. Why don't you make a trade deal with us? Why, the EU doesn't want you. They don't like you. Half these countries want to kick you out of the EU anyway just to punish you. Why do you want to hang out with people? Like, do you have Stockholm Syndrome or something? 
Why don't you understand who your real friends are? Like, let's say that the UK, like, got totally ass-blasted by a, a bigger country tomorrow. Who would defend you? Do you think Germans would rise up and put their lives on the line to protect you? You think the French would? You think the French would rise up, oh, ha ha, we have to defend our brothers in arms? Yeah, maybe. Not very likely under their current political situation, though, but the U.S. would. It wouldn't even matter who's in office. You know, big buddy U.S., that'd be funny. Our economy is a lot bigger. We're trying to do something with China. Why don't you sell us shit? Please? <laughs> Please buy British. You get the opportunity to make more money anyway. Fucking tariff at 5% or something. Do something. Have a hard Brexit and get it over with. You know, get the pain out of the way now. It'll be a lot less than if you drag it on for years anyway. Boris Johnson should make it clear. Yeah, ultimately, I want a hard Brexit. Fuck you. The EU has disgraced us. It has treated us like a minor player, like we shouldn't have sovereignty. Fuck them. You can get those things that you need from other countries. Look, there are, there are other countries in the world. I know that the UK has suffered. The British culture suffered from not realizing that there were non-Europeans in the world. And they would just render them, they would like refer to them as subhuman. This is the problem of the imperial powers. Can you get past that mentality and understand that you're a power, but you've got to treat people decently, and it's not just Europeans. There are countries in the world other than the UK and, and France and Norway and things like that. It's just the way that it is. And I think they should have a hard Brexit. Plus, it would be amusing. It'd be amusing to see all the, like, the Corbins and Juncker and, like, the Theresa May Ramoners. And also, can you imagine Merkel's reaction? Boris Johnson tomorrow gets up and says, fuck it, I'm putting it before a vote now. Let's just have a fucking hard Brexit. I'm not even going to delay it another day. I'm just going to, I'm going to sack everyone. I'm going to fuck with the party and everybody else in the whole fucking world. Give me a Brexit. He gets a hard Brexit. Can you imagine uh, her response? Angela Merkel, who has difficulty standing for five minutes without the delirium tremens hitting her from a life of hard drinking. And you know that that's what it's from, by the way. People can try to fool me all they want, but I'm not stupid. Yeah, she's got the DTs and she's dying of it. <laughs> Some people in German politics probably wouldn't care. Uh, you know, vote AFD, I suppose. Am I allowed to say, by the way, am I still allowed to say that on these websites? Like, are you allowed to back certain political movements if... The German Gestapo has deemed them to be hateful or extreme and conduct surveillance on them. Who even fucking knows? Just know one thing, I'm never going to set foot in Germany. No thanks. I think we should boycott Germany again. <laughs> Last time that that happened, look what occurred in the world. So, you know, be a little bit antagonistic, I suppose. I'm just joking. That's about all. Peace out.